It's nine o'clock on a Saturday A regular crowd shuffles in There's an old man sitting next to me Making love to his tonic and gin John at the bar is a friend of mine He gets me my drinks for free And he's quick with a joke Or to light up your smoke But there's some place that he'd rather be He says, Bill, I believe this is killing me As a smile ran away from his face Well, I'm sure that I could be a movie star if I could get out of this place Saturday, and the manager gives me a smile, cause he knows that it's me they've been coming to see, to forget about life for a while. And the piano, it sounds like a carnival, and the microphone smells like a beer. Well, we're all in 
found control to Major Tom. Ground control to Major Tom. Take your protein pills and put your helmet on. Ground control to Major Tom. Sing countdown engines on three two check ignition and may God's love be with you.
Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States, Donald J. Trump. And I'm proud to be an American, where at least I know I'm free. And I won't forget the men who died, who gave that right to me. And I gladly stand up next to you and defend her still today. Cause there ain't no doubt I love this land. I know this is supposed to be, you know, the, the fake news. They said that this is supposed to be a round table, but it looks like a rally. But it is a rally because we love each other. No, it's, it's, it is a round table, and we're here to really listen. We're here to uh, discuss the uh, Latinos and the Hispanic Americans. And, uh, and uh, I want to say you have a great governor. He's been fantastic. Thank you. I love you, too. <laughs> uh, and we're really, uh, we're really doing well. The, the country is doing numbers that, uh, like, we've never you — will, you will see next year is going to be — you know, you had your greatest year ever, Doug, last year, the best year you ever had. Then we had to close it up. We had to stop. And we saved millions of lives by doing it. We saved millions of lives. And then we restarted. And now we've set all kinds of records, and we're setting records. And I think next year you're going to have a fantastic year. It's going to be great. We're cutting taxes even further. And we're going to have big growth. A lot of good things are happening. But I'm thrilled to be back in Arizona with the By the way, I just looked. I see Artie over here. You've done a great job with that. <laughs> How's Albert? Is he good? Huh? Good guy. He's a good guy. Good job, Artie. So it's really great to be back. I love — I mean, this is good. This is good. You know, uh, this is what the polls are all saying, too. You know, as a Republican, Republicans don't do as well as perhaps they should, and probably some shouldn't do very well. but. The polls came out, and we're leading uh, Sleepy Joe by a lot. Uh, by a lot. And uh, so it's, uh, it's a great honor to be here. But we're here to discuss my administration's unwavering devotion to Hispanic American communities. Hispanic Americans embody the American dream, and they are great business people, like this guy right here. They're great business people. Great, great business people. I know that, because I've had to compete with them. <laughs> Not easy to compete with, I want to say that. Hispanic Americans strengthen our nation beyond description. You protect our nation as brave members of the military and as members of law enforcement, great, great members of law enforcement. You uplift the communities and promote our shared values of faith and family, community, hard work, and patriotism. It's really an amazing — you're an amazing group of people, and I love you, and we're taking care of you, and I'm never letting you down. You'll never let you down. So we're glad to be joined by your fantastic governor, Doug Ducey. He's done a fantastic job. Thank you. He's done a great job. Thank you. He really has. It's, uh, it's, been, it's been incredible. So, and thank you, Doug. Thank we you very much, very Mr. Much. President. Also, thanks to Arizona Republican Party Chairwoman Kelly Ward. <laughs> Great job, Kelly. How are we doing, Kelly, by the way? Okay. <laughs> 
this way. Arizona State Representative T.J. Shop. Thank you very much. Thanks, T.J. Arizona Corporation Commissioner Leah Marquez Peterson. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Sergeant Jimmy Chavez of the National Troopers Coalition. Sergeant, thank you. And we got — we have the law enforcement from all over the country. We just got Florida, all the sheriffs, all the law enforcement, Ohio, Texas, uh, everywhere. I mean, New York. We got New York's finest. They said they've never endorsed before, but they're endorsing this year. That took a little courage, too, because they're in very unfriendly territory politically. Uh, but New York did, and we just got uh, Chicago. Can you believe that? With that, with that wonderful, wonderful mayor. We also have a man that I have a lot of respect. I like baseball. I've always liked baseball, and he's done a fantastic job. Artie Marino, the owner of the Los Angeles Angels, done a fantastic job. How is Albert Pujols doing? Good? Because I think he's great, huh? Good? And you have uh, Mike Trout. So is he as good as they say? They say he's the best player. He said he's, he's better. He's better, right? But they say he's the best player in baseball, right? One of the best. Yeah. That's great. That's very good. Thanks, Artie. Congratulations on your success, too. Great job. Also with us are two wonderful Arizona Republican nominees for Congress, Tiffany Shedd and Brandon Martin. Thanks, Tiffany. Good luck. Good luck. Thank you, Brandon. And you have my complete endorsement, you know that. Complete and total, as I say. Complete and total, okay? And we'll be out working with you. We'll be helping you a lot. I hear you're doing, both of you are doing really well. Very important. And Doug is, Doug is working hard on that. Thank you very much. Uh, Joe Biden spent 47 years selling out the Hispanic American community, sending your jobs to China, raising your taxes, surging regulations. <laughs> I don't know. He doesn't sound too good to me. It's, it's coming up once every three, four days. I've been in every state. I've been in so many states the last few days. Yeah, well, you, you need a lot of — you need a lot of energy to do this job properly. You can't be sitting in your basement for four days and come out. No, and then he comes out. And I like Delaware. I think Delaware is a good place. But you got to leave it on occasion, you know. I mean, it comes out. And remember, he didn't — you know, they say uh, that his home state is Pennsylvania. No, no, no. He left Pennsylvania when he was young. It's not his fault. His father left, okay? And his mother, they left. But they left Pennsylvania when he was very young. And we just had a great ruling. Doug and I were talking just literally minutes ago. A federal judge, a very prominent, a very respected federal judge, came out and ruled that they can't shut the state down any longer. It's too much. They can't do it. He said it was unconstitutional. And it was a great day. And we hope that's going to happen in North Carolina. We hope, we hope that's going to happen in North Carolina. We hope it's going to happen in Michigan, too, because it's just, just totally shut down. Well, you know it's going to happen. On November 4th, they'll open up everything. They're just doing it. On November 4th, they'll announce everything's open now. You know, we were only kidding. The fact is that November 4th, you're going to see it's going to all open up. It's going to all open up. It's politics. So if you know, and as Hispanic Americans, you know better than anybody, we implemented historic tax cuts and regulation cuts, the biggest in the history of our country. And we built opportunity zones that have really benefited your state and a lot of other states. And it's been great for everybody, really, African Americans. And uh, if you look at the African American, it's uh, what they have, what, what they've done, and how that's benefited them. It was I was helped by Tim Scott of South Carolina, and he's a fantastic senator. And he came in the idea of the Opportunity Zone, but for African Americans, Hispanic Americans, Asian Americans, and really everybody, it's been a tremendous success. Before the China virus came in, we achieved the lowest Hispanic American unemployment rate ever recorded, ever, not even close. Over 600,000 Hispanic Americans were lifted out of poverty in that short period of time. That's a record. We, all records, Hispanic American ownership, home ownership reached an all-time high, and that includes Artie's home, okay? That includes the home. Okay, that must be a nice home. I want to see that home. 
But it's the highest uh, home ownership uh, ever in the history of our country for Hispanic American. We built the greatest economy in history, and now we're doing it again. So it's called Make America Great Again. And I say, Make America Great Again and Again. To do it again and again. <laughs> and we added, as you've probably heard, we added 3.3 million jobs for Hispanic Americans in the last four months. That's a record. So we're coming back very, very strong. I call it the Super V. In July, I launched the White House Hispanic Prosperity Initiative to improve access to education and economic development and opportunity for all Hispanic Americans. It's been a very big success. We have great people on the board. And we have that uh, Biden would, as you know, terminate this recovery because if a doctor said, let's shut it down, we have all these records. We have retail sales records, everything. He said he'd shut it down. Can't shut it down. Peaceful protesters. Have you seen his peaceful protesters? <laughs> these are not. They'll rip down your community. Many of these are Hispanic American small businesses, stores, shops. And they rip them down, and they call it peaceful protesting. You see some of these uh, reporters on television. They're saying, yes, this has been a peaceful protest. And over his shoulder, you know, it's a pretty famous clip. The entire city is burning down. <laughs> and these are all Democrat mayors, super liberal usually, but Democrat mayors and governors. Uh, Republicans are doing very well. Republican cities and states are doing incredibly well. Uh, we're at records. We have been at records. We will be at records. And we don't have anything like this. Nobody's ever seen anything like this. And we've sent the National Guard into Minneapolis, and we ended it after a week and a half. They should have called it sooner. We would solve the problem in Portland in, I say, less than a half an hour. It would be solved. But they don't want to call us now. They don't want to call us in. And uh, every place we've gone, we solve it immediately. We, we just uh, — Seattle is an example. They took over a piece of the city. And we said, what are you doing? And we complained, complained. We said, it's OK. We have to go in because we're supposed to wait. We're going in. We're going in tomorrow. And we informed them we're going in. As soon as we did that, they had people go in, and these wise guys gave up. The so-called protesters, they gave up. They're anarchists. They're not protesters. They're agitators, or they're anarchists. So you see what happens with the anti-police rhetoric from that whole group of uh, Democrats and their supporters. They're endangering our law enforcement. We love our law enforcement. Many of the law enforcement. Yeah. Many of the law enforcement, many, many of the law enforcement are Hispanic Americans, as you know. And, uh, Biden is uh, not a strong person, never was a strong person. In prime time, he wasn't any good, let's face it. And this is not prime time for him. This is not prime time. But he'll surrender your entire country to the radical left. And that's all they're doing is using him. He has no clue. So uh, we will take this to a whole different level. What we're doing is taking it to a whole different level. We don't want to have a socialist country. We don't want to have some of you came. Some of you came from parts of the world where it's socialist or worse. You know, it's called the C word, right? The C word. Because I think in many cases, these people are talking even beyond socialism. And we're not going to let that happen. We're not going to let the rule of law really be uh, just uh, be ruled by the mob. We're going to do it. We're going to do it properly. We're going to do it the way we're doing it. And again, remember, the top 10 are all Democrat. And then you go into the top 25, and you take a look at that. It's the same thing. It's all a Democrat problem, whether it's New York, where crime is through the roof. It's gone up, in some cases, 150 to 300 percent, not even recognizable. Or Chicago. You take a look at Chicago, what's happening. They had numbers that were just absolutely horrible. And uh, were you hearing — I don't even want to mention it, but so many people shot, so many people killed. It's — nobody's ever heard of this. This is a Democrat runs the city. These are Democrats, and they have no clue. They have no cash bail. They have they, — they get rid of bail. They get rid of all of the things that you need. Uh, the, the police are afraid to do anything. They don't want to lose their pensions. They don't want to lose their life. They don't want to lose their family and their job and everything else that comes with it. And we have to give our great law enforcement people — we have to give them the respect that they deserve. And if we don't do that, they can never do their job properly.
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. And just in con you know, closing up, and I just say a few words uh, more because it's so important to me, and, and your community is so important to me. But many Hispanic Americans came here to pursue the American dream, right? He came, we all want the American, I want the American dream, we all want the American dream. This is, a, if you, you look at what they're asking for, it's like the American nightmare or whatever you want to call it. But we want the American dream, having left countries that did not have safe streets, many of you, or your family, your mothers, your fathers, they left countries that were very, very bad, very bad, a lot of problems. And uh, if we let this go on, you'd have that. And, it, you know, I often say, we're not going to be another Venezuela. We love the people of Venezuela. We have tremendous support in Miami from Venezuelans and Cubans. We're not going to let that happen to our country. Nobody wants it. And you know who wants it least is Hispanic Americans. They want to see it less than anybody because they know about it more than anybody. And so we're not going to let that happen. Biden wants to take away your police. He wants to I wouldn't say defund in his case, but I will tell you, some of his compatriots want to defund your police. Let's face it. They want to defund your police. They want to take it away. They, I don't know who's going to do the job when they call up at night. You saw the commercial where you call up and they say, murder, I'm sorry. We won't be here for 24 hours. And then they say, I'm sorry, rape. We won't be here for about a week. We'll call you back in a week. And this is what you'll end up with. We can't do it. We have to treasure our law enforcement. That We have to let them do what they're good at. Another thing I think that's so important is that we're defending religious liberty, and Joe Biden will totally eliminate religious liberty. He's going to take away your Second Amendment because he's not going to be what I have put up with in the last four years to defend your Second Amendment. But you have to have your Second Amendment, and they're going to at least obliterate it. They're going to at least obliterate it. They're going to abolish school choice. They're going to abolish charter schools. And we're going to put charter schools all over wherever we can. We have so many people doing so well. And school choice. And we've been working very hard on school choice. And we'll get it uh, very much achieved like we have. Nobody's done as much as we've done in three and a half years. Nobody. No administration in their first three and a half years. I say, and I say this, that I've achieved more for Hispanic Americans in 47 months than Joe Biden has achieved in 47 years. Yeah. 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 They don't call him Sleepy Joe for nothing, okay? But a vote for Republicans this November is a vote for the American dream, and that's all I have to say. I just want to thank you very much. I want to thank you very much. And, and I look forward to hearing from some of the folks at the table and some of these people that I know I have great respect for. All of you I've heard of in one way or another, and I want to thank you all for being here. Really, it's, uh, it's a great honor, and already it's an honor meeting you. And maybe we'll start with our governor, our great governor. And Doug, please, say a few words. Let me be up. Thank you. Let me be the first to welcome President Donald Trump back to the great state of Arizona. And, and, and there couldn't be a, a better way, there couldn't be a better way to kick off Hispanic Heritage Month. So we're thrilled to have you here, Mr. President. Thank you. It's my honor. My honor. I want to say thank you for your support of Arizona families throughout the crisis that we've been through, whether it was personal protective equipment, right. surge ventilators for our Navajo Nation, testing that we needed in places like South Phoenix and Maryvale, whenever we needed it, your administration and you personally delivered. So we're grateful for that. You know, Doug is very aggressive. He called me up, he called me up once, he said, we really need ventilators badly. That's hard, you know, because it's like they're big, expensive, very complex, very tech, I mean, from a tech standpoint, a high-tech standpoint, they have to be perfect. They're very hard, and people don't have them, countries don't have them, and now we've become the king. We're making them like you wouldn't believe. But I said, how many do you need? Could you send us a 1,000? I said, a 1,000. That's a lot. <laughs> but we got them to you. Do we get them you to you? Them to we us got them to us. And, uh, and, and, yeah, thank you. 
and, and, and before this pandemic and after this pandemic, our economy has been booming in the state of Arizona. This has been the fastest growing state in the nation. Um, your, your, your Jobs Act and, and tax cut has done much to spur our economy. The negotiation of the USMCA yeah. has allowed Arizona to maximize its relationship with its number one trading partner, Mexico. And we have now surpassed China with Canada as our number two trading partner China. in Arizona. Thank you, Doug, very much. Thank you very much. And, and the relationship with Mexico has been really great. I'll tell you, you have a very good president, and we've gotten along very well. And uh, they've actually uh, been very good. We've had a, a real relationship. You know, NAFTA was a disaster for our country. And now we have the USMCA, which is Mexico, Canada. And it's been a great — and we're not going to lose our businesses now to Mexico and Canada. They're going to stay right here. So they have a very big economic penalty if they want to play the games of leaving. I mean, we lost — 55,000 firms went down to different — I mean, different places, but a lot of them went to Mexico, a lot of them went to Canada. There's a very, very big disincentive to doing that. Well, I'd like to hear, as a baseball fan, I'd like to hear from Artie, because he really has done — that team's been glamorized, and it's been — it's a great team and great players, great individual players. And uh, let me know about the team a little bit and how you're doing, and uh, let's hear it. Come on. That's a beautiful thing to own. We're not playing that great right now. <laughs> but, I, uh, I really wanted to tell a little bit of my story because I am uh, Mexican-American. Both my parents were Mexican-American. I'm the oldest of 11 children. Um, my father did not graduate from high school. He always uh, was very positive about, I think his platform was, if you don't work, you don't eat. Uh, I'm a Vietnam vet. Um, I was lucky enough when I came home to get the GI Bill and go to college. Um, I went to the other school down in Tucson. <laughs> uh, I'm married to have three great children. Uh, my dad was very much a Barry Goldwater uh, Republican. Uh, yeah. you know, we, were, we were brought up very conservative. Just want to talk a little bit about because I started in my life as a, uh, working for someone and started with a partner, a small business, and over the years we grew it. But everybody deserves the opportunity to grow your own business. It's a very important thing. Everyone deserves a right to be able to raise and educate their children in a safe environment. Yeah. Yeah. I've really been lucky to have the opportunity to benefit from this great American country. Every person has an opportunity to have a voice that's important that we, it's expressed. Very important for every Latino American to get out and vote. It's our It is our right to vote and express our choice for President Trump and his leadership. Thank you. Thank you. We, we all know where we've been. It's necessary to focus on today and the future. And it's very important to vote for President Trump. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. Well, now I really like that team. I liked it before. <laughs> I, li I didn't know he was going to do that, but I tell you what, I appreciate it. And, you know, your story is an amazing story. It's a great story. Think of that. And uh, he's one of the most respected people in sports and in business, and just a great story. Thank you very much. It's a great honor to be Thank with you. you. Thank you. Go ahead. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, and allow me to join with all these folks in welcoming you back to Arizona. It's I'm sure, I'm sure that this is a much more hospitable setting than what you were in California just a little bit ago. Yeah, so, but they were nice. You know. <laughs> this, is, this is very special. Exactly. Exactly. Um, you know, my story is, as uh, uh, 
27, I was elected to the state legislature. Uh, I represent a very fast-growing area between Phoenix and Tucson uh, that has been in the news quite a bit with uh, companies like Nikola Motors and Lucid mm -hmm. Motors uh, announcing uh, their factories there. Uh, my family has been in the grocery business since 1952. Uh, they moved to Arizona um, because they failed at hog farming in Iowa, and I think you have to actually try to do that in <laughs> Iowa. Um, but I uh, opened up a business here in Arizona. Uh, my, uh, uh, their first business went bankrupt. They pulled themselves up, got back to work, opened a new grocery store later yeah. on, uh, because you can do that in Arizona. That's great. You can do that in America. Uh, to be able to to be able to have failure and to come back, and now um, you know, my uh, uh, here I am at age 27 wow. in the state or, or 35, excuse me, oh, age 35, <laughs> and uh, That's what I uh, living a wonderful life, uh, and it's a uh, it's something I think for a lot of the folks out right now to realize it is difficult to be a minority and Republican at times because your your friends your other members of your family oftentimes uh, don't understand, treat you differently, things like that, uh, and you experience things that uh, you probably shouldn't. But it is, uh, we are very proud people, very happy to be up here. Um, in a, actually, in a few weeks, I'm gonna be getting married to Melissa out oh, there. Wow. She's, she's wearing a, she's wearing a, she's wearing a dress by Ivanka. She's wearing a dress by Ivanka, so you oh, can share that. So, uh, uh, so that's, that's good. That's very nice. But uh, more than anything, uh, we 100% believe in what you're doing, and we want you to keep it up. And we know that the one way we can make sure that it keeps up is by getting out to vote and fully supporting the Trump uh, uh, re-election campaign, because that will also help us in Arizona be able to keep the state Senate and the state House. And we are very, very close. And we want to have a huge turnout for you. And we appreciate you coming. We uh, love that you're here, and we hope to see you many more times. And it is getting a lot easier to be Republican for, as you say, minority. It's uh, getting a lot easier, whether you're Hispanic or anything else. Uh, we're taking in people that are — it's a beautiful thing to see what's happening with the Republican Party. And remember, it's the party of Abraham Lincoln. A lot of people forget that. Abraham Lincoln was a Republican. So. Uh, the other side likes to try and claim him big disinformation, but uh, they can't get away with that one. So, hey, thank you very much. It's great. Thank Please you. go ahead. Thank you, Mr. President. I, I, I'm here to share my American dream, and I want everyone to know that our dream is still alive. The American dream is still alive, and I'm going to tell you a little bit of my story. I came here to the United States when I was 11 years old. My mom worked so hard to support our, my siblings. When I was 22 years old, I got shot by the father of my kid. Mm. I survived horrible domestic violence. But after I got shot, after a month of getting better, I had two choices to make. One was to survive out of government welfare, <laughs> survive out of government welfare or get a job. I chose to uh, get a job as a janitor. Because for so much long, I, for the first time, I felt freedom. I felt that I needed to be free, and I didn't want to be dependent on the government. So I started making $5 an hour in 1997, and I love my job so much that I worked my way up to become a supervisor manager, and then five years later, mm -hmm. I end up buying my own uh, my company, my own janitorial company. <laughs> that is looking at the American dream. A high school dropout, they didn't finish high school. I mean, what else can I do but to clean very well and move up the ladder? That is the real That's American cool. dream. Thank you very much. That's what happens here. That's great. So, Thank you very much. So from going to work eight hours a day, we end up working 16 hours a day for the next five years to pay off the big loans. Okay. Then my fiance, Ron Pigner, now my husband is here, helped, I mean, put together. So after 
after uh, five years in 2005, we paid all off. Then after that, I started feeling that I was getting more free and more free. And I'm, I'm a giver. I like to help. If God takes care of me, I take care of others. So what I do, <laughs> thank you. So I, at that time in 2005, I had already 60 employees working for me. And one of the things that I love and do for them is help them learn English, help them buy their first car, help them get their first home. But most of the things that I enjoy the most is teaching them English and make them become U.S. citizens. And over the course, <laughs> over, over the course of, I would say, maybe 15 years, probably my husband and I helped more than 30 people become U.S. citizens. Right. And I'm so proud of that. It's incredible. Sure. Then my American dream was keep coming. I became a U.S. citizen in 2008. Mm -hmm. Then my American, I kept living my American dream, and then 2012 came. That's when Obamacare came, and I and they, I keep hearing in the news, if you have more than 50 employees, you have to cut back, or you have to do something. And I and I told my husband, what's going on? Why am I have to lay off people? And that's when I started getting involved more into what's going on. Why is the government telling me what to do? I work so hard for what I have. Why they have to get in my business? Why do I have to let people go? <laughs> Thank you. So I started getting involved into local politics and see what they were doing, why, so they can hear my American dream and see, I'm still here, I'm still alive, I wanna keep moving up. I don't like to sit and, and listen. I'm the one that wants to get active and, and do something about it if there's a problem. So that's what I did, and look where it got me. Now I'm here next to the president, getting involved. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Para Great. mi gente linda, por favor, let's protect our country. Let's protect our American dream. We're all, we're all Americans. It doesn't matter where you come from. This is our safe heaven. Please, let's put President Trump again for the next four years. We need to save it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. My name, my name is Gloria. My name is Gloria Badilla, and we are a small business owner. We live in Tucson, my husband and myself, and it is my honor to be sitting here at the same table Thank that you, you are, Pre Thank Mr. You President much. Trump. Thanks to you and the policies that you've been working with SBA, we were able to save our small business. As a Mexican immigrant and U.S. citizen now to this beautiful country that I can call my own, we have achieved our American dream. We make fresh salsa and spices made out of chiltepin peppers. Mm. We, we feel so fortunate for the opportunity to have this administration be able to have our Chiltepica products flourish even though we had the setback of the pandemic, we are doing okay. Good. And we will survive this Good. past. Um, we also wanted to thank you for, we have seen our neighbors, our communities, uh, even though, like I said, for this pandemic, has not set everybody back. It's been hard for some people, but we will come out at the end good. Um, also, in Tucson, I've been very involved with one of the senator's races that we have um, against going to Grijalva, and it is my mission and my husband to work with him so we can get him Good. through and get Grijalva's been in the, Sen in the Congress for 17 years. Good. So we, too long, yes. So we have Congressman, not Congressman, future Congressman Daniel Wood, and that's what we're doing in Tucson. Okay.
Chill Topeka products came out of nothing. Actually, we had saved some money to build a swimming pool in our home. And we thought, you know, this could be something. And my husband and I thought what we, we do as the American dream as our own business and say, well, you make good salsa, we'll make good salsa. And that's how Chill Topeka products came out of love of cooking. Great. That's Thank great, you. Yeah. Beautiful story. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you very much. Mr. President, thank you. My name is uh, Jimmy Chavez. I'm the uh, chairman of the National Troopers Coalition, and I'm a 30-year law enforcement veteran. Thank you. I will tell you, not only uh, with the group that I represent, but as you alluded to earlier in your opening comments, um, you and your administration have shown tremendous support for law enforcement since day one. Um, and that is something that we did not see in the previous eight years before you took office. So yes, we thank you for that. We thank you for the support. We thank you for the dedication. Um, we know that your, uh, your, your Attorney General, uh, William Barr, is doing a tremendous job. Uh, we thank you for that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and it's, it's exciting to be a part of this panel because I think, including the, uh, the audience out here, I think that we can all agree that safer communities provi provide a benefit and provide economic stability. Because if you don't have a safe community, who's going to want to go out? Who's going to want to go buy things? So this whole idea of defunding the police or cutting costs on law enforcement is, is something that is counterproductive to what your administration wants, definitely, and what we've seen over the last three and a half years, four years, with, with the economic growth in the, in the country. Um, there's no doubt that many agencies across this country are seeing issues with recruitment, retention, equipment issues, uh, technology that is, that is ever evolving. Uh, and I think if we, if we have um, ideologies that continue to chip away and want to erode uh, law enforcement, I think that's going to have a significant effect on the communities, significant effect on the citizens, and certainly a significant effect on this country. So as, as a law enforcement officer, uh, again, 30-year veteran, and as one who represents uh, law enforcement from country to country, or from uh, coast to coast, I'm sorry, uh, we appreciate your support, uh, and uh, we will be there to offer the same support back to thank you, you and administration. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And look what happened in New York, where they cut a billion dollars, and they got rid of a lot of uh, great, great crime fighters. And look at what happened in a short and, uh, period of time. Austin PD, uh, yep. LAPD, uh, Texas DPS is actually being uh, considered to take over uh, Austin PD because of the drastic cuts that occurred there. So it's it's uh, having Great. some ripple effects. Sounds good. Good governor there. Yeah. Good governor. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Please. Mr. President, I want to thank you very much for this opportunity. Um, it is an honor and a privilege to be talking to you to be part of this table. Uh, my name is Jorge Rivas. My wife and I, Betty Rivas, own <clears throat> uh, We own a small business in Tucson, um, Sammy's Mexican Grill. And, uh, <laughs> Has to be doing well. How's it doing? Doing very good. I want to say that your tweets It wasn't doing so well for a little while. Now it's doing yeah. very good, right? That's good. Your tweets so have helped. Really good. Your tweets have helped tremendously. That's good. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Um, before I came to the back room, my wife told me if I sit on the back, make sure that you tell the president that I respect him and I love him. So my wife said that she respects you and she loves you a lot. <laughs> so, Um, since you announced that you will be running for president back in 2016, I told my wife, 
Donald Trump has what it takes to be the next president of the United States. And we, de and we decided to support you since the, since the first, first day. Um, back when you went to, in 2016, when you went to Tucson and did a rally over there, I decided to make a, a sign that says Latinos support Donald Trump. Because at that moment, the media and a lot of people were saying, Latinos do not like Donald Trump. But I said, that's not true. I said, they are not going to keep me yeah. quiet. <laughs> I'm going to keep talking. Um, I love you, too. Um, hey, your wife. Hmm? Your wife. <laughs> My wife understands. <laughs> she she loves the president, so we're, mm. we're, we're good. <laughs> um, so after having uh, uh, people uh, link our name, our personal names with our business, we got a big backlash, you know, people attacking yep. us. I know. But um, we stay strong. Um, uh, the last few years I've been very involved, you know, not only in the community, but also I'm a member of the, what we call, what we think it is the, the most important or the biggest uh, Republican club in Arizona, which is the Saddlebrook Republican Club. I know that we have some members here. Um, and like I said, we've been very involved. Um, just yesterday, we, my wife and I organized a big uh, car parade, a Trump parade, on uh, Highway 77 on Oakwood Road in Tucson. A lot of people came over, hundreds of cars. Even some of our friends, our Latino friends from uh, Nogales, drove almost two hours to come to the parade. So th there is a lot of support. Good show. Good show. Uh, many of them, after I mentioned to them that I was going to, I had the privilege to come to meet with you. They said, make sure you tell the president not only that we respect him, we love them, we'll be voting for him, but more than anything, Mr. President, having a small business and talking to hundreds and thousands of people a week, I know that a, a ton of people are praying for you, are praying for your administration. Thank you, Thank you sir. And I know that many of these people are very humble people. So, and I think that God is listening to the prayers. So you are in good hands. Thank you, sir. Thank you. My support for you is also, it, it, more than anything, is because you show so much love for this country. I have, I have learned, I have learned to appreciate respect and love this country so much because of the, of the opportunities and what gives to everyone that comes here the opportunity to live the American dream. <laughs> One of the reasons that many of us Latinos like about you is the, the straightforward way of talking that you have. You, you too. I, I, I do not like when politicians try to make you hear or they try to tell you what they think you want to hear. Yeah. Just tell me the way it is, it's straightforward, and that's why I think I like you so much. Many immigrants like myself or many other people who their fathers, parents, grandparents came here 100, 200 years ago, we all came from here for, for similar reasons, for security, for, for safety, for the opportunity to ha own our own business and the opportunity to raise our kids and our families in a safe, a stable environment. So that's why one of the reasons why we support you and so many people support you, that people that I know, they support you as well. But the real reason is that I tweeted out, I saw they were giving them a hard time. <laughs> And I tweeted out, this is a great couple, and I looked at them, and I said, look at this couple. And they were giving them a hard time, and they were trying to do a boycott, because this other side is very vicious. They'll try and do boycotts. So I said, you know what? It's not very presidential. 
but I'm going to do a tweet for Sammy and his beautiful <laughs> wife. And, and you never saw lines like this ever before. And that's the reason. And, and I'll tell you, you have been, you've been great. And I appreciate I hear the place is doing fantastic. He's doing very well, sir, Mr. President. Thank you very much. And I have a few more things to, to make yeah, sure. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Um, my, my, uh, Betty, my wife, and I were being blessed with three excellent young boy, uh, boys, three young men. They're doing very well in college. Good. And I feel that every kid has the need to be supported or to be loved since they are four, five, six years old, helping them in, in high school, helping them get through college. We, like I said, we've been blessed. Our kids are graduating from, from high school and from college with honors. And I, I think that part of the problem that we're having nowadays and so many people are looting, so much hate, breaking windows, stealing somebody's property, is because the parents are doing a poor job in helping the kids. Yeah. In helping the kids, the kids achieve their dreams their goals. So if you are not there when they are very young, do not expect them to be a very good citizen when they get older. Yeah. So I feel that we as parents, we need to do a much better job of raising our kids because if you are not, if you are a, 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 a person of uh, either you're immigrant, you are minority, you are Hispanic or black person, if you are not helping your kids when they're very young, do not come with me 10 years, 15 years later and tell me that you have a sign for me to, say, to, me to respect your sign that says Black Lives Matter. Mm. You're <laughs> if you are being irresponsible, not helping your kids, I will, I will suggest for you to take your sign frame it and put it in your house, in your living room, and look at it every day and, and care for your child when they're young. keep the family structure together, stronger, family, dad. Because for us, we, my wife and I work very hard in our business, 12, 14, 16 hours a day. But we, we always make time to support our children, make sure that, you know, that their, their needs were met. You know, we are not rich or anything like that. We, were make, we make sure that they had, you know, what they needed to succeed. And I think we are failing very miserably on that. Um, when, when your opponent is not saying anything about all the uh, destruction that the, the people are doing out there, they're only promoting that destruction. So we, we as Latinos, we are people that, that care for our family, people that, that, that we call their, ourselves Christians. How, we must support someone, in this case, President Trump, to lead this country for another four years. sentence, okay? I'll be done, almost done. <laughs> I feel, uh, Mr. President, that we, if we call ourselves Christians, we should, con we should really think, or maybe those pe people out there that, cons that consider themselves independent, to really think, what do you want your country to look like in 10 years from now? Do you want your kids to have an opportunity to succeed, or do you want to have a breakdown in society where they are not going to have the options to, to live the American dream. So for, for those reasons, I feel that it's extremely important to listen to what the other side is saying. Because for, for the, the, the commercials that I see are all based on lies and hate. Let's, let's, let's lie about what President Trump is doing. Let's lie about, you know, uh, blaming him for COVID-19 or everything else, you know. 
and they are not and they are not showing any uh, structure or any goals or any plans or what they're going to do. Everything is based on attacking President Trump. Shame on you, Mr. Biden. <laughs> And lastly, just last thing, <laughs> as, a, as a good business owner, as an as a entrepreneur, uh, as an American, Mr. President, I wrote a book, I finished writing a book two weeks ago, and I gave uh, one of your White House staff a book good, good. to give it to you, so if you please read it, I think I it's very good. Um, <laughs> um, It is called, it is called American Patriots. No, no, I'm sorry, that's not, well. It is called Modern Patriots. Why modern? Because we are, we feel that we as Latino, we are new, well, like myself, we're a new generation, but we'll, we're full of love for this country, and we're standing up for what, what is right, and we're standing up for you, Mr. President. Beautiful. Thank you. Beautiful. I love you. Beautiful. Thank you, Sam. Wow. That was a good job. That was actually very good. Are you proud of him? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Dale. Go ahead. Follow, follow that. Go follow that. No way. Well, thank, thank you, Mr. President, for the opportunity to speak with you today. Uh, my name is Moses Sanchez, and I'm a legal immigrant from Panama. My family and I came to the United States during the Reagan administration in search of that American dream. And we've been pretty good with doctorates, nurses, and entrepreneurs in our family that are contributing back to the fabric of this country. I've proudly served my Navy's, my country's Navy combat team for the last 24 years. Yeah. With a tour in Afghanistan in 2011. Now for decades, our Hispanic community and persons of color have been accustomed to getting lip service from our political leaders. Promises of better schools, safe communities, and economic security. You delivered on all your promises that have improved the circumstances our communities face. Historical records in unemployment. Home ownership. Massive investments into opportunity zones. And an economy that lifts all boats. My daughter Shannon and I, we own a digital marketing company named Nona's Marketing. It's her name, Shannon, backwards. Good. When you came into office, we had one employee. At the beginning of this year, we had over 12 people in our office working hard, Good. helping other businesses increase and improve their digital footprint. Then COVID hit, and it impacted everyone. Our company was no exception. We are fortunate to receive PPP funds during the first round. Many of our clients also received PPP funds. The PPP loan helped us get through the shutdown, and many of our clients were able to stay afloat. Now many are doing better. Not fully recovered, but better. Right. COVID and these shutdowns have a huge impact on our economic security, mental, physical, and spiritual well-being. My, my, Mr. President, my, 
I think it's important that my, my wife is an OBGYN here in Phoenix, right. focusing on substance use disorders in pregnancy and parenting women. She personally asked me to tell you that she really appreciates all the work you've done in addressing the often overlooked opioid crisis. We believe long-term shutdowns have added to substance use. And we're glad that you're doing everything you can to fight COVID and open our economies in a smart, safe, and effective way. And we're really looking forward to the continued recovery. Thank, Thank you, you Mr. Much. President. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Beautiful. Say hello to your wife, please. That's really nice. I appreciate it. We have made a lot of strides with the opioid and the drugs, but uh, you get set back with this. Uh, this China virus was uh, a big setback, but now we're back to uh, business. But we, we did get set back with this horrible thing that was sent. It could have been stopped. It should have been stopped. It should have been stopped. They stopped it going into their country, but not coming into our country, not coming into Europe and the rest of the world. So, but I appreciate those are beautiful words. Thank you very much. Please go ahead. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. And welcome back to Arizona. Uh, my name is Leah Marcus Peterson. I serve on the Arizona Corporation Commission. So we regulate our public utilities, among other things. Uh, I'm also the past president of the Tucson Hispanic Chamber. And I've been a proud Republican since I was 18 years old. Good. Um, thank you. Our family has a long history of small business ownership. And that's really what resonated with me as I was growing up in Arizona. And it's really those values, those Republican values of less government, more personal responsibility that you've heard from many of the other panelists today. Um, I went on to own my own small businesses, a chain of gas stations and convenience stores, as well as a business brokerage firm in the Tucson area also. Um, I'm very proud though of leading our Tucson Hispanic Chamber, which is one of the largest Hispanic chambers in the nation with more than 1,800 members. Mm. And during that time, I worked with thousands of small businesses from Pima County, Kochi, Santa Cruz, all throughout Southern Arizona. And I wanted to mention to you uh, just a very big thank you for the Tax and Jobs Act. I saw firsthand working with small businesses in Southern Arizona, the impact on their businesses, the ability to acquire additional pieces of equipment or, or hire new personnel, and it really had an impact. Um, secondly, I, I think the governor mentioned it also, I wanted to thank you for your leadership on the USMCA, the U.S.-Mexico-Canada Agreement. That's great. Thank you. Thank you. As, as you're probably aware, Arizona does more than $16 billion in trade with Mexico. They're our number one trading partner. And you often hear about a lot of the large companies and transactions, but there's so many small businesses that are dependent on that relationship. So that really meant a lot to the members of the chamber that I worked with. Thank you. Um, at the Corporation Commission, I'm working hard to ensure that businesses and families are not going to be hit by the radical California energy policies that a lot of us are seeing now. Um, we're hearing about the California rolling blackouts. We're trying to defend our state against a lot of these Green New Deal components that are coming forward. So uh, that's something that's very important. I know it's going to drive up not the cost happen of energy. Here. Good. <laughs> And I, I know that you understand these issues and, and you've got our back there because we need to do all we can to, to really recover from this economic time. And, and I think the cost of energy has a, a big part of uh, what, what's going to impact families and businesses in the future. Right. But thank you, President, thank for, you very for much. coming to Arizona. That's beautiful. Thank you very much. Please. Thank you very much. Mr. President, it's truly a privilege to be on this panel and, and sitting at the same table with you here today. Thank you for coming to Arizona for the fifth time. <laughs> My name is Pam Kirby, and I'm a first-generation college graduate. I also serve on the Latinos for Trump Advisory Board, Good. and I'm the first vice chair of the Arizona Republican Party. <laughs> 
Most recently, I completed eight years of service on my local school board, and in the spirit of lifelong learning, three months ago, I earned my master's in education policy. Mm, great. I, have a, I have a lot of responsibilities and priorities, but my passion lies with education policy, and that's what I'd like to talk with you about today. Um, I first want to lead by thanking both you and Ivanka, who, she did a, by the way, she did a fabulous job introducing you at the convention, um, for the reauthorization. I want to thank you both for the reauthorization of the Perkins Career and Technical Education Grant, CTE grant. That was worth over $30 million to Arizona for more than our 200,000 CTE students. I want to thank you for your efforts to roll back federal intrusion in our classrooms. That allows... That allows our local districts to better respond to their community's needs rather than wasting valuable resources chasing down one-size-fits-all mandates from Washington, D.C. And you mentioned it earlier, I'm grateful for the opportunity zones that you have created because that encourages expansion of quality charter schools in our most underserved communities. Mr. President, Arizona is a national leader in school choice, but even so, 80% of our 1.1 million K-12 students enroll in a public district school, and almost half of them are Latino. My eight years of service on the school board taught me that we cannot continue with the status quo if we want to be competitive in a global economy. We must stop the radical indoctrination that's happening in our classrooms we must stop the indoctrination and instead teach our children to love our country and all she has to offer. And Mr. President, that includes standing for the American flag. education system that prioritizes the children over the adults and funds the student instead of the institution. You know, you talked about school choice earlier. There are a lot of candidates out there who say, school choice for me, but not for thee. We have to reject those candidates because school choice cannot be reserved for just the few people. We need to empower all parents with the right to choose the educational um, systems for their children. And more importantly, we need to empower them with the means to execute against that choice. And when we have done that, we will have truly freed all students from their zip codes. Thank you. Thank you. So, in closing, Mr. President, I want to thank you for your commitment to the American people, and more importantly, I want to thank you for your commitment to the most vulnerable of our society, our children. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Great job. Thank you. School choice. Absolutely right. Thank you. Please. Mr. President, my name is Sergio Arellano. You can call me Serge. <laughs> and uh, I am a first-generation American. My parents are from Sonora, Mexico. They received their right to be here during the Ronald Reagan amnesty. As a show of gratitude to the country that allowed them to do that, I enlisted into the U.S. Army on April 1st, 2001. at the age of 17. <laughs> Fast forward to September 11th, which we just recently, uh, you did a great job in remembrance, Mr. President. Thank you. Uh, and I find myself deployed to Ramadi, Iraq, September of 2003, and participated with the 1st and the 16th Infantry Division on the fight for Ramadi, Fallujah, Habaniya, and Al-Assad. <laughs> Thank you. 
Unfortunately, after 10 and a half years in the infantry due to combat sustained injuries, I left the military as a wounded warrior. And when I left the military, I was lost. I was homeless. I had a three-year-old son. And uh, now I have four. <laughs> Good job. Um, but it was really hard to navigate the spectrum, to get services, to get any help whatsoever. It's a travesty what the government has done to veterans when they get out of the military. Right. It's thanks to you and your laws and your leadership that allowed me to have choice when it came to health care. Not only for me, but for thousands of veterans in the state of Arizona. I'm born and raised in Tucson, Arizona, and I'm also a small business owner, entrepreneur, and I'm also a school board member, so Donald Trump's policies are music to my ears. <laughs> but I just wanted to bring a couple of things from down south, from Tucson, and, and bring it to the table as to what the Latino community is feeling and what it's missing. And what it's missing is more of your leadership. And Latinos, are conservative, they just don't know it. I'll, I'll, I'll make it really quick. I, I don't want to drag on too long here. But um, ever since you were elected, it's been easier and easier and easier to recruit Latinos from all over the state. We started doing three-person Trump trains down in Nogales, and we've grown. I'm also on the advisory board for Latinos for Trump. And we've grown our organization here to include three victory offices for you, and also um, over 1,100 volunteers for Latinos for Trump in the past three months. Great. It is a critical time right now for our kids, for our family, and for our children. And I'm going to give you just one personal tale where I had my kids in the car. We pulled over to the side of the street. We were playing Pokemon Go. <laughs> and we got pulled over by a police officer. And I told everybody, you know, relax. These are the good guys. Police officer shows up, says, hey, what's going on? Are you OK? Yeah, my kids wanted to catch a Pokemon. <laughs> and he says, well, you can't be parked here, but you know, go ahead. Go on your road, uh, go, go on your path. Uh, this was about a year ago, and my son says, Dad, I haven't heard in my entire life, and he's 17 now, anyone say that a police officer is a good guy in my neighborhood. This is the stuff we're facing in southern Arizona, in Tucson, in liberal ran areas that hate police. Okay? Um, so, Lastly, I want to uh, really have my kids, who are your biggest fans, stand up and uh, say hi to President Trump, guys. They are your biggest, biggest, biggest fans in the world. And they have your picture in their house. And, so. and, they're, beautiful, um, and they're beautiful kids, too. Thank, thank you. you so much, it's President. Really nice. And in closing, when I tweeted that President Trump was coming to Arizona for the fifth time to hear Latinos and their opinions, I had some hecklers say, I'm sure President Trump will listen to you. Here he is. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. That's a great job. That's a great job. Thank you very much. Please. Good afternoon. We welcome new citizens who love our people and share our values. Paul and Speech 2017. Immigrants enrich this country, and I want them to come in big numbers. State of the Union 2019. 
Mr. President, these words will resonate with me forever. Thank you so much for what you do for the Latino community, for securing our borders, for supporting legal immigration, and for your efforts against child exploitation and for... and for being so successful fighting human trafficking. Yes. You heard us loud and clear, and you know that we want safer communities. My name is Monica Yelling. I was born in Bogota, Colombia. I came to this country in 1998 with a J-1 World visa just one piece of luggage and $300. In 2005, I proudly became a citizen of this country. <laughs> and right after my naturalization ceremony in Brooklyn, New York, I drove as fast as I could to the New York Board of Elections and I registered to vote. I live in Port Washington, a little town on the north shores of Long Island. <laughs> my husband, my husband is here and he's a Jewish American New Yorker from New Rochelle. <laughs> Who is glowing full of excitement and wanted me to thank you for standing for Israel. Mr. Yellen, never ever believe in any candidate for presidency until you run for presidency. <laughs> so he voted for you. That's great. Thank you. That's really nice. Thank you very much. It's a nice looking guy, too. Nice looking guy. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And of course, he owns a small e commerce and investments business that, even with this pandemic, is still succeeding. We left New York because of high taxes, the cost of living, and as you know, the potholes. It's like Tucson. Like Tucson. <laughs> <laughs> we came to Arizona because it's a prosperous state. Today, Arizona is one of the fastest growing states we have surplus, and it is estimated that by 2022, 57 billion Latinos will have that amount of in power in spending. That's right. That's right. Thanks to your administration policies, Latino families have more money in their pockets because of the double child credit and the standard deduction, the double standard deduction. Furthermore, small and medium businesses are grateful for your tax costs and the deregulations. Back in 2019, in September, we had the lowest Latino unemployment rate, which was 3.9%. And in 2018, more than 362,000 Latinos bought homes around the country. Thank you, Mr. President. Twenty-one years ago, when I arrived alone in this country, I could have never imagined the diverse and, blessing, and blessings and the journey that, I was, that was ahead of me. 
from getting a master's degree, translating everything at night at home, to becoming a chairwoman of a large insurance industry committee in the East Coast, to director of strategic initiatives, to being elected by vote to a county board, to be appointed as one of the members of Commission of Domestic Violence, to serving my community every day, and most important, to be here today with the President of the United States of America. I am a living proof of the American dream. Anything in this country is possible. And on behalf of many Latinos around the country, we want to thank you for leading this nation and for, and for sharing your family and religious values with us. <laughs> Due to the nature of my uh, duties, I communicate and I engage with organizations and nonprofits and the community every day. And everyone is aware that we are on the road to recovery and much faster than we expected. Again, thank you very much for this wonderful opportunity and for serving our country. We love you, President Trump. Thank you. Great. Well, I just want to finish by saying my people told me this was going to take about uh, one third of the time, but after these stories started going, I wasn't leaving. I want to tell you, they, they are they are incredible stories, success stories, all success stories. Uh, you've done so well. The Hispanic community is amazing. I knew that immediately. I knew that from many years ago, long before I thought about doing this whole deal in politics. I didn't have to be told about the Hispanic community. I dealt with them. Uh, natural business people, great business people, great, great business people. Uh, you have to be very sharp when you deal with the Hispanic Americans. Uh, my Latinos, I love the Latinos. But, uh, but I've always known how great you were. I mean, Artie's a great example of it, one of your great examples of it. But uh, it's a fantastic community. I will never let you down. I will tell you, I'll never let you down. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.